Creative control is another entry in what is quickly becoming a ubiquity of indie films exploring humanity's increasingly complex relationship with technology. I don't mean that in a disparaging way, as long as they continue to be unique, engaging, and thought-provoking. I welcome the expansion of this genre. Can I call it a genre? Indeed, I'm glad for the addition of creative control into the repertoire, though it doesn't quite blow our fledgling genre apart, like could be said of some other more recent entries. It sits nicely somewhere between her and the Congress, though that too is somewhat of an unfair statement. For one, it's not quite as good as those films, but it is unique enough to carve out its own cranny in the cinematic landscape. The most immediately striking feature of creative control is the aesthetic. This film is almost entirely black and white, save for a few choice elements, which really serve to highlight technology's role in the characters' lives. It starts subtle at first, in fact I didn't even notice it the first few instances because it's integrated so well, but you'll see it become more and more prominent as the themes progress with the story. There's some pretty interesting cinematography as well. One example of this that really stuck out to me was a scene where a couple are having an argument in their apartment, but the camera was filming from outside their window above the city. This gave it an odd kind of voyeuristic feel, like we had access to someone's personal moment that we shouldn't be listening in on. And it also lent it a feeling of everyday ordinariness, becoming part of the sound of the city, together with cars driving by and so on. This film isn't all style and no substance, though. The quality of the script was a pleasant surprise, especially impressive given this is only the second feature of the writer-director star of the film, Benjamin Dickinson. All the characters are nicely fleshed out and interesting, even in the small roles, and each actor delivers on both the humor and the dramatic moments. Reggie Watts is in this film, playing a version of himself, and he's a predictably excellent addition. Watts is only part of the draw, though. It's a genuinely funny film. The humor is kind of dorky sometimes, like a group of friends making dumb jokes together, but the cast sells it really well. It also makes kind of an odd dichotomy against the soundtrack, most of which is Baroque. We're talking recorders and harpsichords. Dickinson uses the score well, though. It works in its own weird way. Like many of the best of these near-future sci-fi films, Creative Control is not as much about the science and technology as it is about the people who use it. It has a lot of interesting things to say, and while some of it has been said before, this film presents it in a unique enough way to be worth seeing. A quick warning, if you're investigating more information about this film, the trailers are fairly spoilery, so I'd be careful looking too far if you're interested in seeing it. Of course, the footage I've used in this video shouldn't ruin any enjoyment out of context, so if you're intrigued, I definitely recommend seeing Creative Control. It's already one of the most memorable films I've seen so far this year, and I'll be keeping an eye on what Benjamin Dickinson creates in the future.